Hey, what's up guys? So in this video, I wanted to do a short little tutorial on, uh, or I guess a little bit of a breakdown of kind of what I used to get that tone that you guys heard in the beginning of the video. So in this video, we're going for a Symphony of Destruction slash Countdown to Extinction tone. I just wanted to share with you guys a little bit of my settings and also share with you guys some of the techniques I use to try to match some of my favorite tones. In this video, we have some interesting things to talk about. And the first thing I wanted to bring up was the type of amp or preamp that Dave Mustaine most likely used to record this album. So I think as a fan, I think most fans, we can only really speculate what was really used on the albums unless we were to get direct confirmation from people like Dave Mustaine or the actual engineers who engineered the album. So um, from the research that I did, looks like Dave Mustaine during this era was using the custom audio electronic three plus preamp. And we can see actual photo evidence of Dave Mustaine actually having this unit in his rack. So if we can zoom in, it's, it's this like silver kind of grayish uh, preamp. Uh, you see it also in this picture as well. Clearly in his rack. And uh, I don't personally own this preamp. If I did, I would certainly use it in the video and show you guys, but it's a pretty pricey amplifier as we can see uh, in the thousands and probably a, a well-made, very high quality amplifier. But the cool thing about this preamp is that it is modeled in the Axe FX. As we can see, it's actually the actual amp model that I used. So uh, for type or amp type, I use the CA3 Plus lead. For cab, I just use a traditional or classic kind of own hammer IR that just sounds good. So I don't think I didn't change anything on the cab block. But for settings and drive, I had uh, the drive at around six and a half, seven. I think you don't want the gain too high because personally, I find this. Uh, preamp to get a little bit muddy if we if we go around 9 or 10 and we kind of max it out and what we hear on the on the actual record we hear a pretty tight sound uh, and in my opinion it's much easier to get a nice tight sound when we have the gain actually lower so for bass two mids three and a half treble seven and a half and presence I had it pretty high at around five because it's a, it's a very punchy kind of tone if I had to describe it. It's got a good amount of treble, but also uh, a good amount of bass. It sounds very punchy. So these last EQs uh, I just use to, again, shape my sound. I use a very small amount of reverb. Uh, again, I actually have the, and you can actually download the isolated track for this particular song. So if you take the time to listen to it, you can hear that it's very dry. And you don't hear a lot of reverb like what was pretty common in what we saw in Rest in Peace or no, not not so much Rest in Peace actually in uh, the Peace Cells kind of tone. That's when they were using a lot of reverb. So for this particular album, I used a, just a tad bit of reverb. For these parametric EQs, I actually uh, use Logic essentially and I use uh, these match EQ functions where you essentially take a piece of the isolated track and you drag it here in reference and current and you record your guitar and it'll analyze your current kind of frequencies and then it'll match it compared to the reference that you use but as you can see here I've pretty much matched it very uh, closely to the actual take of the album so I'll, what I essentially do is I record one and then it gives me kind of a graph. And then I use these parametric EQs to start uh, sort of uh, copying the graph. So as I copy it and I get closer to the actual EQs, these, this uh, every time I re-record it, this, this line or 
the effect of this match EQ becomes uh, less and then this sort of difference is, is very minor so we can almost essentially turn it off and it wouldn't make a big difference because I essentially I do the match EQ function uh, using the Axe FX, uh parametric EQs so every time I input what I what it tells me the difference is and I essentially layer it until I can get it something that's so close in terms of parametric EQ it really matters what guitar you're using so I wouldn't uh, copy these settings because it really depends on your guitar and the pickups that you're using so uh, your parametric EQs would look uh, I'm, sh I'm assuming uh, quite a bit different so anyway that's just the technique I use for the parametric stuff you guys can hear the final result of what I'm able to get with triple tracking uh, the guitars. So for this particular video, I tracked one left, as you can see, one right, and I used one center down the middle. That's a little bit uh, not as loud. So anyway, I think I got a pretty good result, and uh, I'm happy to share my settings and talk a little bit about uh, what Dave Mustaine used. And uh, that's pretty much it for this video. If you like this video and uh, you got some use out of it, learn something about this kind of tone and this era of Megadeth, go ahead and like the video and consider subscribing because we have more videos like these coming out and we release videos on a weekly basis. So hopefully guys, we'll see you in the next video.